Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Hump Ray Embroidery. So I had a weekend away last weekend. I went to Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show. So I thought I would show you some things that I bought and show you some things that I enjoyed seeing there. So hi everyone, welcome to another video. A little bit of a different one for you this time because I had a day out, as I've mentioned, at the Stitching Show and I thought I would just show you what I bought there and some things there that inspired me. So if you've never been or if you're not in this country um, and you definitely haven't been, then I just thought I'd show you um, what they're like and what my day was like there. So it's the Knitting and Stitching Show. So this one was held at Harrogate, so that's in North Yorkshire. Um, they do hold the same show in other places around the UK. Um, that's the nearest one to me, and I think it's actually the nicest one I've been to as well. So it's held at the Convention Centre in the town of Harrogate, really beautiful town really beautiful convention centre actually um, and it's attached to the theatre there as well so you can go in the theatre and you can sit in the theatre and have your lunch and it's a very very beautiful theatre so it is a really nice venue for the stitching show. So before I go any further I do need to just say hello to a few people because you came up to me and you introduced yourself said you watched the videos and it was really lovely to meet you so I'm going to say hi to a few people so we've got Melanie and Rosie and also Beatrice and Diane hi to all of you um, Diane actually met at the pedestrian crossing outside <laughs> which was quite strange um, so I hope you had a lovely lovely day Diane because you were just on your way in um, really nice to meet you um, thank you for coming and saying hello and how much you were enjoying Enjoying the videos it does mean a lot to me and it was really nice to put some faces um, to some names at last as well. So obviously you can do a lot of shopping at these shows so if you've never been to one it's basically a mixture of uh, shopping stalls and then people showing you their work um, and their guilds are there as well and a lot of students showing their work too so obviously shopping is quite a big thing um, so I'm going to show you what I bought first um, I didn't go mad because I've done that in previous years and you think oh I can do this this and this and you have all these great ideas and none of them ever come to fruition so I was quite reserved in what I bought but it is quite interesting looking at it in front of me it's definitely a theme of what I'm working on at the moment and some ideas I'm playing with at the minute so I thought I'll just show you those first so the first thing I knew I wanted to get actually was some silk so I'm going to show you the first one so I bought some silk hab silk habitat <laughs> I can't even say that um, if you haven't seen my video on my sea sketchbook my sort of sea life inspiration book that's on my other channel Sarah Humphrey creates you can go and check that out I'll put a link up to that and I found in there a lot of samples on some of this silk and I haven't used it for ages and I thought actually it would be really nice to get some of that and have a play because it's a beautiful fabric I'm just going to get it out of the bag so this came from the Silk Route. All these people I mentioned in this video, I'll put a link to their websites um, in the description below if you're interested to go and have a look at those. But this is a very soft silk. It's quite kind of see-through. Quite sort of floaty. Oh, it's lovely. So I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> to do with this but just thought it's a material I haven't used for a while and, and I did a lot of printing and painting on it and you can sort of see through it and layer it so I thought that might be really fun so I got a metre of the silk have a tie. So continuing on the silk theme I got some of this pieces of silk actually so it's sort of strips of silk there's different kind of silks in there it's quite a thin thin silk as you can see and it's just strips of it and I just thought this would be really fun it just comes in a kind of a skein I thought this would be really fun because I'm playing around with some dyes at the minute I'm doing some tea dyeing um, and some fabric dyeing with some natural things that you can get in the kitchen um, there will be more videos coming on that and I just thought this would be really great to use in that it's a nice natural colour and I can just have a little bit of experiment with some strips I can use them in my slow stitching or my projects or use them to tie things with so I thought that would be a little bit of fun as well and then I got some of this silk tusser T-U-S-S-A-H and this is quite different from those other two silks so this those are very fine um, finely woven silks and this one is completely different if I just take that off you can see how coarse this one is but I just thought this would be um, fun to use as a background for something we've been doing a little bit of slow stitching if you're not sure what slow stitching is 
we have a video on this so do check that video out as well and just use pieces of it and just different textures um, and different colours and different types of fabric are really nice to do this slow stitching on and that just caught my eye just thought rather than something really refined um, and finely woven it might be fun to play with something a little bit coarse and what's interesting about Tussa silk is it's made from the silk from wild moths and not cultivated moths and they have a different diet and they eat different things and it comes out this sort of natural brownie honey colour. So I thought that was really interesting the difference between it. it's still very soft but it's got this very coarse weave in it and, and very different sort of types of fibre so I thought I could have a little bit of fun with that in my slow stitching. So I'm talking about slow stitching um, for no reason other than I just like them I found these buttons so these are Popplestone Studio and I think it is Karen let me just check Emma, <laughs> it's not Karen, it's Emma. So Emma from Popleston Studio makes these buttons. Now Emma lives on the Isles of Scilly. Um, yes, there are some islands called Scilly, <laughs> the Scilly Isles. They are just off, well, they're not just off, they're off the very tip of Cornwall. If you go to the end of Cornwall and just keep going out into the, the sea, you will get to the Isles of Scilly and quite a long way out. Um, but I think she moved from Yorkshire originally. I think she lived in Yorkshire, so she was kind of maybe coming back home because I thought she was a long way from home. But she makes all these beautiful buttons and things um, in her studio in the Isles of Scilly. And she had a wonderful stand here. And I just really like these. Just no other reason than I thought they were pretty. But again, would look really nice on a piece of slow stitching or project or something like that. So I've got those to use as well. And as I look at what I bought, there is a bit of a theme going on here because I've also got some sashiko threads. So sashiko, if you aren't aware, is a kind of a, a little bit of um, what slow stitching is based on. It's a Japanese technique, an old Japanese technique of mending and you layer your fabrics together or your clothes that have got a hole and you lay another piece of cloth on the top and you do a running stitch through it and you make your clothes last longer and you can make new pieces of fabric out of old clothes by doing this. So it's just a running stitch but the thread they use is very specific. It's called Sashiko thread and there's this stand called Japan Crafts who were selling these and they've got loads of sashiko kits they were really beautiful kits and they've got lots of the threads as well and I've got some of the white thread but I just thought I'd try some different threads really so this is the traditional thread here but a different colour you can see this variegated one here so I thought that might be quite fun to see what colours they come out in you're just doing a running stitch so um, the colours are just going to come through the plain stitch because you're not doing a fancy stitch and I thought that might get some really nice colour variations in there they also had some of these new threads, Moko, Moko, for hand stitch. Now these are 100% polyester, so the Sashiko is cotton and these are polyester, um, but they you don't strand them like you do a stranded cotton, they're just one piece, you use them as they are, but the traditional ones can be a little bit soft and they can break quite easily and I thought well it might be interesting to try these, these ones are polyester, so I've got a, a white one, traditional white colour, um, and I've got the navy as well, I thought well, that could be fun to do maybe some reverse colours these are the traditional colours so the navy fabrics with the white thread and I thought maybe some white fabric with some navy, th navy thread might be interesting and I just got a neutral one as well in variegated and I thought I'll just have a little play with that and see what those are like. So I bought some um, embroidery frames, I'd a little look around see what I could find and we do have a video about embroidery frames but it's quite an old one now and we thought we would update it a little bit and make a new video on it and I thought I'll have a hunt around and see if there's some different frames I've never tried before and I could try those out and I could let you guys know what those are like. So I found a few there, I've got some plastic ones, I've got some spring ones um, and I've got some other ones that we've, we've already got as well so we're going to make a new video on that so I'm going to add these ones to it so do look out for that one because that one is coming up soon. So the stitching show is also a chance for me to catch up with some people. So sometimes it might be people who are watching the videos. It might be some students I've taught or colleagues I've taught with. Um, but I also managed to catch up this time with Tanya from Studio Flax. Now, if you saw my linen thread video, I tried out some of Tanya's um, threads. I'd never used the linen threads before and she gave me some and we gave them away and you so you could have a go. And we made this little teapot design up here, which is on the website if you want to have a go at that. So I chatted to Tanya again. Really nice to see Tanya. Um, and see her stand so busy as well and she gave me a couple of things I'm just going to show you those she gave me a book Werner's Nomenclature of Colours and basically what this is is a a sort of field guide to the colours of the natural world and Charles Darwin actually took this book 
not this actual book, took a version of this book, an early version of this book, on his trip around the world on the Beagle, and he used the colours in it um, to describe things that he saw. So I'll just show you a page here. And he actually described um, some clouds that he saw as um, as hyacinth red and he uses these colours in here because it tells you animals and vegetable and minerals that um, are also this colour and he used them to describe the things he saw on the tour. So this was a kind of a very usable guide at the time. It's probably been superseded by Pantone colours and things like that now but um, very popular guide at the time and it's really nice to have the original so I will enjoy having a good look through that. And she gave me a bag to put it in. <laughs> so these are Tanya's bags. She's printed this design. So this is one of her um, traditional Swedish designs that she has. And she's printed that on there. And that's all ready to stitch. So I might do a little bit of stitching. I'll pull those linen threads out and do a little bit of stitching on that. That would be fun. Um, and she did express an interest in doing something again. It was really fun to do that together. So we might do another collaboration. So do keep watching out for that because we may have some more stuff to give away. Who knows? So as well as um, the opportunity to do lots of shopping there, there was also other things on the display. So there were other pieces on display. And one of the ones that I always love going to is the Embroiderers Guild stand. And they bring some pieces out from their collection every year and they make a display of it. Um, and it's sort of one of the few opportunities really you can get to have a really good look at them um, in a public place. And they made their display this year and they based it on um, embroidery throughout the century. So they started um, 1900s, late 1800s, 1900s and went all the way to the modern day and they had this really interesting array of embroidery around the wall and it was good to see how it had developed through those years. So I just thought I'd show you a few of my favourites. So we'll start at the beginning. So we'll start in 1918 with this amazing little sampler. So this is Wessex work, um, kind of invented by a lady called Margaret Foster. Um, she designed it, but it's a kind of a counted thread technique and just uses very simple stitches. And what I love about this one though, this is for the armistice. So this was a World War One piece. She made it in 1918 and it's a sampler and it says on it, and if you can see that, it says work finished while the promise signal sounded over London. So piece was announced basically and the end of the war had come while she was stitching this amazing sampler and I can't imagine what that must have felt like but this is beautiful it's a very small sampler and the stitches the stitches are tiny and there's lots of different sort of variations on there there's a little bit of pulled on there a little bit of black work stitching on there but I just thought that was really a meaningful piece um, to see. So the next thing that caught my eye was this evening bag. Now this is very small, it's only about this big, and it's Petty Point, if you know Petty Point, very, very, very tiny um, tent stitches and usually worked on a silk. Um, it can be done on different counts of fabric. This one was super, super small. I think it must have been a 40 count or certainly near a 40 count. Um, very, very tiny stitches made in 1932 to 1933 and the condition of it was really, really beautiful. And I just think it was amazing to just to see the kind of work they did in those days without all these magnifiers and the lights and all the the aids that we have to help us these days um, and how beautiful this was and how small the stitches were too. So we jump into the 1950s now and this is a piece of all new work and it is by Beryl Dean. Some of you might know Beryl Dean, very famous for doing um, ecclesiastical pieces of embroidery and it's a firebird dancer. So she's in a costume of the firebird and so this is the all new way technique. So you lay the gold threads down onto the surface of the fabric and you couch over them and the colours that you couch over the threads with are what makes the design or what makes the pattern. So you do your shading with the couching threads if you like. It takes a very, very long time to do. So whenever I see a piece of all new way, I'm always in awe of it um, just because of, I know the amount of time that goes into it. But they're really very beautiful. You can get some lovely um, subtle shading techniques and that gold, what's not stitched over, really shines um, when you catch it in the light. So also from about the same era, but it just caught my eye, is this piece of machine embroidery. Now it's a strange shape. I'm not sure what the shape was now. I didn't get the details of it. Um, but again, about 1950s, 1960s. But I just love some of the motifs on this. So sort of the beginning really probably of machine embroidery as an art form, I guess. And I just love this little fish design. It's really, really beautiful. I'm not a machine embroiderer. I'm not very good at it. I get very cross with the machine, but I do appreciate it when other people do it. And I just thought this one was really inspiring. 
So the other thing that they had on display, which I have seen a lot because it comes out every year, is the world's longest embroidery, officially, from the Guinness Book of Records. And this was um, started by the Embroiderers Guild and it was made to mark their 100th anniversary um, in 2006. So they started it before 2006 and they took it all around the country. And I think it's been all around the world as well. And they get it out and you can sit and do a bit of stitching on it as you could at this weekend. I have stitched on it before somewhere <laughs> in the metres of it, but I'll just tell you how long it is because it's 605 metres long. That's 661 yards of it. And it was all coiled up underneath the table. <laughs> And they just get a section out and they've got some threads and you can sit down and you can have a stitch on this um, piece of historic, I suppose, um, needlework. So you can make arrangements to go and see the Embroiderers Guild collection. They've got loads of stuff in there. I've seen some pieces from it quite a few times now. Really, really worth a look. Or you can check out their social media and their websites. I'll put all those links below and go and have a look and see what they're doing because they're doing a lot of modern stuff as well. They still do exhibitions now. Um, so you can go and have a look and see what people are working on at the moment. So it is a knitting and stitching show. I'm not really a knitter, but <laughs> this definitely caught my eye. How could it not? So this is a scene from the film Shrek. As you can probably tell, um, this was knitted by the Hawes Yarn Bombers. So the knitters of a place called Hawes and they meet in a pub every week and they just sit and knit together. And every year they have a different theme and they make this display based on this theme and they take it to the stitching shows and they put it on display at the stitching shows and they um, ask for donations for charity. Um, and they've knitted this whole scene when it's kind of more than life size. Um, so I just thought that was a lot of fun. And the lovely ladies, I'm sorry I didn't get your names, um, but they were on the stand and they got a little knitted Shrek. <laughs> Shrek ears on and they were walking around the show with their Shrek ears on which I thought was quite brave of them but um, really fun display and just to see what you can do um, with some needles and some wool. So I guess the other end of the scale sort of literally scale wise um, was um, this piece that really caught my attention from the 62 group of textile artists and this is by an artist called Isabel Curry and I did actually have a good chat to Isabel about this because this actually absolutely blew my mind I just could not work out how she did this and even after talking to her which was really interesting chat I still don't really know how she did it but sometimes that can be the beauty of it if you look at something you think oh I just don't know how they did that and it's got this sort of sense of mystery about it but she bases these uh, sculptures I guess you would call them on stitches that we know so this is called floating fly stitch so the blue is the v of the fly and the red is the the stem of the fly stitch and she somehow put it together in a box she's drilled some holes in the box and she stitched through the holes and made this absolutely incredible construction and every angle that you look at it from it was different and it did something different um, depending on how it was lit and where you looked at it from um, and I just really really caught my attention really something different and I just can't imagine how she even sort of began that process really she's definitely got a different mind to the way I work and it's always inspiring to see something that you don't know how to do um, and I just thought it was really really beautiful. Again you can check out Isabel's work I'll put a link to her website below if you want to see some more of these fascinating sculptures. So that's just a whistle stop tour really of what the show is like. Really enjoyed it this year and we go up for a few days. I go with my family so Caroline came with me too. You'll know Caroline from my timbre videos. Caroline does those amazing timbre embroideries and my mum Pauline came as well with us and we had a really lovely weekend together. We stayed up there um, and if you're in Harrogate you can't go and stay there without going to Betty's. So famous tea rooms called Betty's. Um, you will have to queue but it's absolutely worth going inside. Um, very famous for its sort of pastries and its and its cakes and things like that and a really amazing amazing experience so do go to Betty's if you're there and in Harrogate at this time of year as well they have a competition for the best window display as well and I think Betty's probably usually wins it which is probably a bit unfair but there were some other amazing window scenes as well so it was fun to have a look around at those and to get into a bit of a Christmas spirit. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that quick look around the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show. If you went to Harrogate or even the one at Ali Pali, do let me know in the comments below. Let me know what it was that you liked the most. And keep watching for those videos that I mentioned because we've got those coming up soon and I'm excited to go and have a play with the things that I bought.